It is. It is so pretty. Yeah, I know. It's part of it. Oh, so, um, I have to come back so we can see. Oh, this is like part of my froze um, artwork. This artwork looks like part of my fro. <laughs> yeah, they got drinks. Have <laughs> Hey, you guys. So we are at the Gulf Coast Naturals Fierce Fly Fabulous Hair Health and Beauty Extravaganza, and we're getting ready to head inside. Her at one time, girl, and our best Mary Mary. Where are you at, sugar? Because <laughs> that's what we waiting on. Okay? You yeah, have another just look around and stuff. Oh, yeah. What? I said we just look around and stuff. This is white linen. Hi, good. How are you doing? <laughs> Everything on the floor is made by me. We have amazing smelling body butter. Okay. The candles also go down to our body. What? what? Anything you like, everything is $10. Okay. The butters are made with shea butter, mango butter, olive oil, avocado oil, grape seed oil, black seed oil, so you can also use it on your hands. Oh, okay. Let me know if you like anything. Thank you. Let's get some of everything. Ooh. Strips, yeah. Oh, what's that? Is that what is that? I know, right? I was straight, but oh, look at those gold ones. So cool. So I am big. Hello. Feminine care, but fellas, earmuffs. 
what what do you mean by feminine care items? As a lady, it's so important for us to take care of ourselves. So I have done a lot of research on our pH balance. I went to school. I have a degree in marketing. My minor was in chemistry. So we I make yoni um wash. I do information to go um. You can get a Yoni Steam. I am a certified V Steam practitioner. So any questions you have, you can ask me. I'm very open. Okay. Ha! Uh -uh. Wait a minute. I have seen some. They have a seat. So I have seen some faces as you were just going right out there. I look okay. Hey, are you? We can all appreciate it. So tell them more. So a V steam is like a refresher for your yoni. So it helps with women who have fibroid issues, women who cannot get pregnant, fertility issues, and a woman overall who just needs to cleanse it. Meaning maybe you went through some things personal in your life. It's not just a health thing is also a mental thing. So a yoni steam is used with different type of medical herbs. Back in ancient time, women lived by it. So it's just basically coming right back out now. So if you've had some issues mentally, mental issues, health issues, everything a doctor gives us, honestly, we cannot use because that's what throws off our pH balance. So some women do live the holistic life, some women don't. If you choose to live a holistic life, there are certain type of herbs that you can go and steam. The process of a bee steam basically is, is a pot of hot herbs that you sit on anywhere from 30 minutes to 60 minutes. And like she said, it does feel absolutely amazing. You may be like, you're going to sit on something super hot. But if you never received one, it's a feeling, me personally, that to me, you must try. So, that's what it is. <laughs> queen, she be me, her is. Girl, Queen, Queen, she, me. Oh, that's just all it is. All right, is that the blog name too? The blog website? Queen, she, me. One E. <laughs> Queen she me. I told y'all it was a lot of ease. No. All right, go ahead and pull your phones out. Get your Instagram, your Facebook, your browser. Those of you that don't know from Apple, it's Safari. Right. All right. What's your name? What's the name of your blog? Underscore Ebony with I, Nicole, underscore. With an I part of the number? No, it's I. Okay. Yeah, you never know. You never know. You never know. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Carrie Paul, and my Instagram is Carrie, three kids later. K E R R I, the number three kids later. Because I used to have a very fabulous life, and then I started having kids, and. <laughs> I'm getting back to the fabulosity after three kids. But I also have a blog, and it's called KerryPaul.com, K-E-R-R-I-P-A-U-L.com, and it's lifestyle, motherhood, mompreneur, empowerment, and things of that nature. And one last mompreneur tidbit, I also am um, a franchisee. We're opening a new restaurant called Brick and Spoon, it's a breakfast, brunch, and lunch establishment that will open in the summer of 2019. So you guys can follow Brick and Spoon below C for updates. But it's going to be a really, really good spot that you guys will want to definitely check out. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Linda B. Hurd. I am from New Orleans, Louisiana. I am a natural hair product, um, let's say, reviewer on YouTube with over 27,000 followers on YouTube and um, over 4.4 
million views. So y'all can check me out on Instagram at Linda B Heard, L-I-N-D-A B. And heard, not like you heard me, but it's H-U-R-D. And I'm also a blogger, and my blog is she's found strength.com. Wait, one more time. Linda B. H-U-R-D. Yes. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. And now I have to follow that. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, little old me is from Vicksburg, Mississippi. I am an influencer and a blogger on Instagram only at Nappy by Nature underscore 90. So, ladies, um, influencers, I'm going to start with the influencers. And I know it's going to sound crazy, but influencers. For those of us who regularly just purchase products and do different things, what was it that let you know and got you started as an influencer? Like, how many products did you actually swap before you decided to be an influencer? Um, mine kind of happened, I'm sorry y'all, my voice is going down because I'm sick, but mine happened because a lot of people would ask me questions about my natural hair and my daughter's hair. So I started reviewing the products on Instagram and that's how I built my followers by, you know, just basically reviewing products. Um, I actually started out in, let's say, the third year of being natural. I've been natural for seven years. And it was because I started getting scammed by a lot of natural hair YouTubers. And whenever I was purchasing products, I was like, yo, I have so many products in my product stash now. And half of them wasn't working for me because I didn't understand my hair. I was going off of what I saw other girls doing. So after like those three years kicked in, I said, let me get on YouTube and let me show these people, you know, what's really real because everybody's hair is not the same. And once you actually learn what works for you, then you can actually start building your own little product stash and, you know, have a good one. That's not just because you see what everybody else got. Okay, so for me, I started when I big shop and I started out as a product junkie, but I'm still a product junkie. Um, actually, more so, I have a lot of products so I, I'm not here to tell you don't buy everything <laughs> but I started out just trying to find out what works for my hair and blogging about it because YouTube used to discourage me a lot because I would see everybody on there with like perfect hair they'll make a post like first time trying perm rise set and then they have me pop it I'd be like hell though so I just really wanted to start it and you know be as honest and as candid as I could to kind of inspire somebody else. You know, you're going to have hair fails, product's not going to work, it's going to be okay, keep pushing on. All right, so for my bloggers and my mom, Pinor, Pinor, there's an R there, in case anybody wants to try and spell it. Um, in business, how would you say the natural movement has assisted you and what would you like to see going forward um, as a blogger and how do you progress forward, moving out of the trends of just teaching people how to do twist outs and make it not be flat the next day. That's my own problem. <laughs> well, I don't think you guys caught my name, but my name is Queen Esther, the Queen She Me, and I came from Pensacola, Florida. Um, how I started was just simply because I just wanted to document my own natural hair journey. It started in 2014. It wasn't a lot of information present. And so I just decided to start documenting it so those who were like me, wanted to transition, could actually find someone who was actually documenting and sharing about their journey. For me, as far as the natural hair community, I've seen a lot of changes over the years, and I'm seeing more so now that a lot of people are starting to get out of all the product reviews and the tutorials and do it this way and do it that way. And whereas for me, it's the same thing because I find that more so the natural hair is about finding who you are, hence why Queen She Me came about, to discover the queen who is she within me. So that's what it is really now for me. It's just really about just coming out, speaking to people about really embracing your natural hair more so worrying about the products because like Nappy 90 just explained, like you can just get a whole bunch of products, try them out, they may work, they may not work, but it's really about embracing your hair and the journey along the way and actually seeing your transformation from just going from probably having like really kinky hair, how I started to now having more of a looser texture. And it just really has helped me to really learn more about myself and to just build more confidence too in what you're seeing in the mirror every day as well. So I'm not going to be long, but I just really want to 
really just touch on the natural hair movement. And when I first went natural, my hair wasn't like that loose pattern that you see splattered all over oh, Instagram you're good, you're good. and the commercials and things like that. So I would like to see the natural hair movement move towards embracing more for hair type for hair. Because it's a lot of us actually, and you know, you have to learn, like Queen Sheeny said, you have to learn how to embrace your hair, your hair. You don't need to look at somebody else's and think, okay, well, you know, she has looser patterns, she gets more reposts, or this is that and the other. You have to just embrace your hair. And I would like to see the natural hair movement kind of gravitate towards all hair is beautiful. Now, Carrie, you're in business. And from a business perspective, uh, we see a lot of ladies that are here that are business owners, and a lot of people in here that are business owners in the natural movement period, not just hair. What was your journey and what would you tell them about going forward and being trendsetters instead of following, you know, those things that may seem popular and trendy because the weather here is different. So our products have to be different here, um, just on humidity alone. So what is your advice? And even for, you know, as Cardi says, regular regular people. Well, I'm regular regular too. <laughs> but when I, I went natural in 2008 and there was nobody that I knew of that was natural then. And people thought I had lost my mind, literally. And it was a struggle at first. And as an influencer, and I've been commercial modeling for over 10 years. And even with my agency, it was a struggle at first because I would wear straight hair or I would wear extensions and I felt like I had to have that certain look of the straight black haired person to get jobs but then I finally found the confidence in myself to wear my natural hair and then I started booking more jobs because I don't want to say that natural hair is trendy but it is and it's a good trend and I think it's a trend that's coming from the intrinsic nature that it is who we are so people are starting to embrace themselves and love themselves for who they are and even through my journey working in corporate America, I was working in um, university fundraising. So I worked for Southern Miss. And for a long time, I felt like I had to straighten my hair for events if there was a big event. You know, I read somewhere on social media, let's stop straightening our children's hair for Christmas or for special events because it's giving them the idea that straight hair is special, which our texture can be straightened and it's fun to do different things, but we don't want to give that connotation that straighter is better. Um, and I found that in the workplace, I finally got to the point where I could do what I wanted to do and wear my hair curly and big and just kind of look at them like, and what? <laughs> and honestly, once I started doing it, they embraced it. And, you know, when I say they, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Exactly. But even as, um, and this is my last thing, I want to say this. What's so important to me about being a business owner and showing women and girls out there that we can be ourselves is that I can be a role model to young ladies and they can see a natural hair texture or a trendy, I mean, I have shaved sides. And, you know, we did our groundbreaking for our for our store last week and we and I was on WLOX, but I didn't feel like, oh, I need to put my wig on. I'm not gonna lie, for a baby second, I was like, I wonder if I should wear my straight hair. But I said, no, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna show them what a real black woman with kinky natural hair and a trendy hairstyle can be out here doing good with them. And not afraid to have people come to my restaurant and say, oh, a black woman owns it. And she's really black. Like she got shaved hairstyles, <laughs> you know? But that's important to me because I wanna show that to young people that you can be yourself and still succeed in America. What was the one thing that made you want to say, you know what, I'm over it with the chemicals and the eight hours in the shop and trade it for eight hours at the house? <laughs> Let's just be real. Wash day is wash day. Clock in, clock out. Well, like I said earlier, I started my journey in late of 2014. And to be quite frank, what really prompted me to just go ahead and start transitioning was I did not like what I was seeing in the mirror. I wasn't comfortable with myself. I wasn't loving my relaxed hair anymore. I had it really, it was really long, just like how it is now. But then I started coloring it and everything. And it just wasn't the same. And then, so my mom has always been natural. She's right here. And um, 
I mean, mom, you've been natural for forever, so <laughs> I've never seen with straight hair. And so I was just like, well, why won't I just do the same thing? Just start over, in a sense, and just start just transitioning. And unbeknownst to me, I had already started it until I started doing research and realized that's what it was. And so I just woke up one morning, started transitioning, and then I woke up Easter Sunday, 2015, and just cut it. And that was just it. I was just like, I'm ready. And I just started being more comfortable with what I was seeing, my hair, and seeing the actual change. And I just started really just loving who I was again. And this just really has just been a true just blessing in itself, just really just starting to just re-embrace my natural roots. Um, for me, it was because of my daughter. Um, I knew that at one point in time, she's going to get to the point where she wants, you know, hair that's straight. So I wanted her to look at me and, you know, basically see that I wear my hair natural. So she can do too. So. Basically, that's when I started transitioning. I think I transitioned in 2013, and I big shopped in 2014. So, yeah, I'm four years natural. I already told y'all I went no, natural no way, but I just did it just to do something different, I think. <laughs> um, I actually went natural, went back natural when I got in high school. Um, I grew up poor. So my thing was, my mom was like, look, I'm not about to put a relax in your hair because my mom had alopecia. So I always grew up seeing my mom with a wig on, going out and being inside in the house or whatever. She always had her bald sides because it was no way for my mom to like grow her hair back because my auntie was jealous of her and her beautiful natural hair and actually put a perm in it and made her bald. So when I started going back to school, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of these people looking at me like I have something to prove. And I was always getting bullied and teased about where I grew up at. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back to, I'm going to relax my hair. That was like probably my ninth grade year. So once I got to 11th grade, I was like, you know what? They're going to talk about me regardless if I'm broke, if I'm looking good with a relaxer, or, you know, just just in, in, in general. They was going to laugh and talk about me regardless. So I went back natural. My mama was so proud of me, and I was the first person at my high school because I'm from Assumption Parish, and that's a really small parish in uh, Louisiana. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something groundbreaking so these people could see that, you know, y'all can talk about me, but, you know, whether or not I have four to six inches of hair on my head, I'm still beautiful. So when I went back natural in 2011, it was actually showing people that I am beautiful. I love myself. And I was showing my mom there, with or without hair, we both are beautiful. So for me, I've been natural for about two and a half years. What made me go or return natural? Honestly, I was on that new me, new year, new me. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And just woke up and just stopped perming or relaxing my hair. And I got so anxious to see my natural hair because I was so excited during my journey. I cut it. I cut it off like five months later. And I've been rocking it ever since. So ladies, what is the wildest and worst thing that you have done or learned in this natural hair journey. <laughs> My son is trying to answer questions. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be real. I'm a scaredy cat. Okay, I am. I am terrified of heat damage, color damage, 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 damage. I have done nothing. I'm boring. <laughs> color scare because um, I decided to bleach the front part of my hair and I wanted to do it like purple. So I was sitting in the mirror and I was mixing up some color, like some bleach and developer I had got from the beauty supply store after seeing the girl on YouTube doing it. And like the front of my hair started to like, I would say it was turning white, orange, and like a dusty green at the bottom. And I started freaking out and I was like, oh my God, my hair is coming out. And I actually had hair coming out, like it was coming out the front of my head. And I was like, oh my God, uh, what am I going to do? So I had tried to keep on mixing color and I told my husband, please go to the beauty supply store and give me a black, a jet black dye. So he was like, you sure? And I was like, look at this. So he went to the store. <laughs> Got my jet black color and I had to do like serious protein treatments to get my hair back to where it was, but it was completely damaged in the front from me trying to do some color, so yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not a DIY girl. I am a go to the hair salon and <laughs> let me tell you, I am a hair school queen. Like, they know me and every time I piss somebody off, it's okay because six months later they got a whole new crew, so it's perfect. <laughs> um, 
the probably the craziest thing I've done is this right here. I mean, shaving the side and then it was getting back longer and it was, you know, the, you know when the sides are growing out, that's like the time when it's kind of like, I'm sorry for the ugly face. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean? When it's, but you got to keep the sides tapered. So for all you new naturals, you have to keep the sides shorter than the top. But mine was dirt near a bob and then I was like, I don't really like the sides and I let a boy in the hair school cut it, but he's so cute, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably why I've kept my sides cut with little designs for so long because the little guy that does my hair, I have like a secret crush on him. I guess not secret anymore, but anyway, this is the craziest thing, this. Yeah, for me, I'm really scary. Um, recently, I just got my hair straight, and I was so nervous about the, um, thinking I had heat damage or whatever, but nothing really for me. I'm just, I'm, I keep it regular for me. Yeah, basic. I'm basic better, too. No color, no direct heat, like none of that. I'm in cosmetology school, and they wanted to experiment. I'm like, no, we're not going to experiment over here. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, ladies that, you know, have the, the, the um, social media, the strong blogs and things like that, what is some business advice that you can give to some of the ladies out in the audience who, they're buying products and they're now about to start following you, you know, they've connected to you. How is it when you go out and what can you tell them right now that is like the key to getting started? What made you keep going? Because I know I tried blogging one time and I was like, this cannot be a daily thing. This has got to be like once a year. Because I just didn't have that much time. <laughs> so, so what made you keep going? I'll say invest in yourself. Don't be afraid to spend a little money on your business. Um, Network with others. If you find someone who's doing what you want to see yourself doing, reach out to that person and say, hey, I'm Carrie. How I want to be like you. How did you do it? Honestly, I have to totally give props to my partner, Brittany Bright. It's a young lady that I met. She's a mommy blogger, and she said she found me and was like, oh, my God, another Gulf Coast mommy blogger, and she is amazing. And basically, she taught me what she was doing. And, you know, I was one of her clients, and then we partnered up, and we worked together. And that's how I found so much success, by finding other people who are doing what I'm doing. Research. You know, I did my own research for a while, but sometimes you'll hit a wall. But, like, literally, spend some money on your craft and you'll really see some gains. Um, I would say actually have a affirmation as to why you're getting started. Because once you get into it, it's easy to start posting videos on YouTube on products and it's easy to, you know, actually get a brand's attention, you know, no matter if you're um, type 3, type 4, it doesn't matter. You know, I feel like if you remember why you started and you actually keep on going because of that reason why, then you can stay, stay clear and keep going because of your you know, your motivation within yourself. You have to believe in you first before you can say, hey, what you think should, you know, do you think I should do this? Do you think I should do that? Believe in yourself first and actually speak over yourself because that's the way you're going to make it through. So that's my best advice right now. For me, <coughs> Nappy by Nature underscore 90. My best advice is kind of piggybacking off of these two. Um, the first thing I would say is kind of find your niche. It's a lot of bloggers online, and I've noticed that. But when I first started, I didn't know it was so many. So when I first started, my niche was honest product reviews. I, you know, I'm not saying the product didn't work for one person, but you know, everything don't work for you here. I be watching people, oh, this was amazing, this was amazing, this was amazing. Everything's not going to be amazing. So I started with the honest product reviews, and then I went to small black owned businesses. Shout out to Product Junkie Naturals back there. Make sure y'all get some of that. So, um, find your niche and just, you know, stick to it. Invest in yourself. When I started, I kept all the old pictures on my page. They, they're horrible. Bad lighting and all that. I invested in better lighting, a better iPhone, because I still use my iPhone. Um, <laughs> so, you know, invest in yourself, find your niche, and just do it. Don't spend too much time thinking about it. Just go straight into it. And just take the time because it is time consuming. You know, you got three kids, you got a child, I got a child. I don't know if y'all. Yeah, it's time consuming. You know, child plus a PhD, like, 
I barely have enough time, but you know, you have to make time and just be dedicated to it. Being consistent is important, but one thing you'll see, like the huge bloggers, they don't post every day. If you do something and it's not good, don't post that. Take your old pictures, not don't delete them, but you can archive old stuff that doesn't fit with your brand because you want people to see your best self. So if you do a video and it's not good, don't be afraid to scrap it. I mean, don't waste people seeing you with that and get a, a bad idea of you when you have better stuff. And I, I plan a lot of posts, so I try to make sure it look. I mean, I just take so much time before I post something. I, I have stuff from last summer that I'm going to post next summer because I'm just like, oh, ain't no, like, is it perfect? Is it in the green tones? But I mean, don't be afraid to jump out there and get started. Put something out there. But yes, being true to yourself, people will see where it shines through. Somebody, one of my clients told me today, and it really meant a lot to me. She was like, I want my stuff to look bright and vibrant. And Karen, when you post up, it's bright and vibrant and fun. And I was like, really? But I mean, that was great edification to know that what I'm doing is really what I want it to do. You know what I'm saying? It's really showing what's in my heart. And don't feel like you're ever too old. I even have to, y'all, even my husband, he does me like this. Thank you, you're not a model. I'm like, dude, do I not have checks from Barefoot Model? Don't do me. Okay? But I mean, it's like people think Instagram model, but I don't, you know, it's not even about a title. If you get in that check or if you're making, if you're doing something and you're finding some type of gains from it, then keep doing it. And you're never too old. Because I'm 37, damn near 40, and I'm still doing this modeling thing. And I show, I mean, I model people stuff and make people buy it. I must be good at it. I mean, thank the Lord. But I'm saying, if it's something that you want to do and you do it well and you put your time and effort into it, keep doing it. I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, no, you're fine. I was just going to say, be consistent. Um, with Instagram, I know they follow, what is the cost list? What is the thing they follow? Like, it goes how... And so, basically, you have to be consistent because if you, like, fall off, your your pictures won't be seen or something like that. So, yeah, you got to be consistent with that. Use the right hat. See, I can go all And hashtags. Hashtags. Don't hashtags. Don't put hashtags that doesn't match your stuff. That's true. And use, like, the, not the same ones every time, but use, like, have your own that you use consistently, and you'll find yourself trending higher in those hashtags. Yes, like, because when I first started off, people were like, why are you hashtagging all your pictures? But I'm telling y'all, hashtagging work. It will get your pictures out there. So, yeah. Pretty much everything they said, remain consistent, use your hashtags, and you have to remember your why. And it's the same thing with me, because when you start out with something, it may start out like how Nappy 90 was talking about, just simply just, you know, doing honest reviews. And that's how it started for me, but I started to learn too through my journey and just talking with other women that is really just me just coming on and just talking. It's not even really about me sharing the products because sometimes I do get off track and just start talking about real life stuff and I'm starting to find it. And they like that, yeah. So Exactly. And so that's why I tell people like, it's okay if you start out with one thing, but if you see that it's, if your, your passion is changing, it's okay to go with the change and the growth. And that's what I'm starting to learn too with myself as well. So, but consistency is key if you're wanting to be you know, and to know it to be just around for years to come. All right, we have two more questions left. This next one is, what is the biggest thing that has happened to you? And what is the best and what is the worst thing that has happened to you since you started? Or what's the best or worst thing that you've heard or piece of advice that you've gotten? Well, a piece of advice, I could just honestly say is to just be yourself. Um, because with the natural hair community, as from my perspective, um, it's changing. Um, you know, naturally a lot of people are in it because, you know, we love our hair. We want to try the different products and everything like that. But for me, the community is more about women empowerment, helping to uplift other women. And for me, on the negative side from what I find is that that's lacking, I find, because a lot of people don't feel like, I guess they're being empowered or encouraged or in a sense being encouraged to love what is actually growing from their scalp and I just find that 
within the community is still kind of small, I should say, as far as like influencers, because when I was actually invited to actually come today, I was just floored. I was humble because I'm on the smaller scale compared to you guys. I really am. And so for me, it just speaks volumes because I find, I guess, that with my lane that I am able to reach people and to touch them in a different way. And in a, yes, yeah. And I find, yeah. And the, within the community, I find though too, sometimes that when people get too big, they start to kind of slight you some. And honestly, I had that experience twice this year. So it's kind of changed my perspective too in the community and how brands work with people and who they decide to partner with. And so I've kind of had to even reevaluate my life and seeing, well, a lot of things that I thought I wanted, it's not actually what I want to do now. It is, and you just start to, when it happens to you, that's when it starts to change. And I think that's what really happens. So for me, the natural hair community, I do think it's still good, it's positive, and it's still gonna to continue to grow, because a lot of women are still, to this day, starting to learn to embrace their natural hair. I just think it's just important that we just don't lose the message of how we are just so powerful as women, that we are queens, and that as long as we remember that, no one can take that away from us. Okay, for me, I'm trying to um, yeah, the thing I would say about the natural hair community, I love the natural hair community, I love being a, you know, a part of it, but um, for me, I have to tell myself, you know, to basically stay, I'm not going to say humble, but, you know, to basically, if someone comes up to me, you know, speak and talk to them about hair and stuff, because I have met some of the bigger natural hair um, ladies, and they really, y'all, <laughs> they come out very... And, you know, you click the picture and it's like 15 billion tags. And it's kind of overwhelming these days because it's like everybody is trying to sell you something. So for me, it was like you have to stay true to you because you can't always do it for the money. You know, sometimes, you know, for me, after working with a lot of big name brands, especially during like times like Essence in my city of New Orleans, it's been so weird. People are like, oh, my God, Linda, you don't work with this brand and that brand. And it's like, dude, you know, for me. I have to remember, okay, so I'm getting treated like this on a larger scale, but when I go home and I have that money, is it like, is it really worth it if the brand really don't care about you? They just care about your hair? If I lose all my hair today, you know, from something that happens to me, is these brands still going to work for me? So where that coin going to go? So don't do it for the money. You have to do it for a deeper reason as the, that's beyond the money. So that was the biggest thing that I had to really take in and I knew from the jump when I went into it. I'm not doing it for the money, I'm doing it for the people out there who don't have the money, who are working these jobs, who are like, I wanna buy some nice products, I wanna buy this, I wanna buy that. I'm not gonna get online and sell a dream to nobody and they're like, dude, she said this was supposed to work like this and when I put it on my hair, blah, blah, blah. So that's my biggest thing, do it for the love of you and not for what the brand is trying to sell you with a coin or a check. So for me, my best experience just has to be connecting with other bloggers and people online. Um, I really enjoy doing that because you'd be surprised just, you know, the sincerity you get from, you know, other people. Ah, Chad, I'm my worst. Um, my name is Nappy by nature. And a lot of people are like, why did you say Nappy, Nappy, Nappy? You know, Nappy is supposedly a bad term, but I wanted to flip it and make it to where, you know, it's more empowering. So, so one experience that I had, um, <clears throat> no names, but y'all probably know anyway because they specialize in other hair. But um, one brand sent me something to review, and I'm, I'm only guessing um, she did not care for the results because I did a wash and go, and you know, wash and go is wearing your natural hair pattern. Um, so she decided to not, you know, acknowledge me and when people ask, well, did anybody with type 4 use your product? You know, she was like, no, I haven't had anybody. And I'm like, girl, stop lying to people. And it kind of, it, I'm not going to lie, we're talking about being empowered and, you know, being confident. That kind of, you know, shot me down for a little bit because I'm like, what's wrong with me? But, you know, that was my worst experience. You know, you just got to bounce back from people who don't, 
you know, appreciate your texture. So. I can frankly say my worst experience with hair is just growing up thinking my hair wasn't good enough. You know, I mean, I, probably a lot of us in here can say that. And just growing up here on the coast and, you know, like I can go into the topic of colorism, but I believe that colorism and hairism are one and the same. But just, you know, getting to the place as an adult where I don't like the N-word, not the N-I-G-T, the N-A-P. Just personally because I feel like people do use it in a negative connotation. And I experience it where, you know, even with loved ones will say that word. And I'm like, please don't say it to my kids or in front of my children. You know, I have to like check people and I will check them real quick. But I want my children to grow up embracing their hair. And I'll give y'all a story. My father-in-law, so I have a set of twins. And it's boy, girl, twins. And then I was pregnant with another baby. And my father-in-law was like, oh, Karen, you know, it's so good that, and I was thinking he was about to say, it's so good that you had a boy and a girl because the next baby, it won't matter. You know, I'm thinking that's what he was going to say because people say that all the time. No, this person, <laughs> he going to tell me, oh, well, it's so good that, you know, your daughter, Jean, came out with the good hair and that Jules came out with the nappy hair. Dude, are you serious? Like, I really, y'all, I had to check him and from the depths of my soul, I had to like really like remember to be respectful. <laughs> and my heart's beating fast as I tell you the story. But that's their, that's how they grew up. That's what they grew up, the culture that they grew up in and we did too. But I have to eradicate that in my home. And I let them know. Actually open up a small natural hair salon. Um, it's not a lot. It's not a lot of them across the nation. It's not even where I'm from. It's not even available. I actually had a, my first client last week, and she actually shared with me her experiences of not being able to find a stylist. She's in the military, and how pretty much other people really do not know how to cater to our hair. And I have even had to deal with this the last four months. And so that's why I went back to school. So simply, I'm able to actually further educate myself so that I'm able to give the tools to other young women. And so just really just to encourage them and to just help them and to encourage them again that your natural hair is beautiful, that you are a queen. And even with me being in school, I find that sometimes my presence can be a little intimidating because I do embrace who I am. I love my natural hair. And even some of the other young women in my classroom start to embrace their hair so shortly after meeting me. So it's it just speaks volumes that when you can actually just be you and embrace that, that it helps other people to do the same. And so on top of that, I even launched my boutique last week, Queen Shimi Boutique, and I'm just selling a two-in-one hair and body butter, um, pretty much for if you have eczema psoriasis, or if you're just pretty much like a newly natural. Because when I first went natural, nothing was real. I didn't know what to get. And I just simply just use butters, and I just remember that that really just helped. And I live in Florida, where it's humid and it can be dry, so I just need something that's really going to help to moisturize my hair. And so that's presently what I'm doing right now, and I'm just simply going to, going to just continue to expand Queen She Me to reach other women yeah. to let them know that you are a queen. As long as you can, as long as you continue to just seek her out, she will come to to just come to light, just really support other people to see. For me, I'm going to say YouTube, I have to give my head off to you because YouTube is hard, y'all. Oh my goodness. Yes, so I would probably say I'm just going to try to, you know, get my YouTube going. Um, also, I work at a shelter for abused and neglected children. I'm a social worker. And so I'm, a lot of the girls that come into my job are natural, so I'm trying to get the word out to them, basically, about being natural and stuff like that because they ask me a lot of questions. So I'm trying to, you know, start something with that. So, yeah. Have y'all ever heard the term, dress for the job you want and not the job you have? Remember that. I don't know why I wanted to share that with y'all, but well, it kind of goes with what I'm about to tell y'all. Um, so what's next for me? I just want to let everybody in this room know that nothing can stop you. Like, stay on your grind and stay on your hustle. And that sounds so easy to say. And when someone is sitting up in front of you and they just glitter and you think, they ain't never had it hard, you never know. I want to share with y'all Earlier this year, I had a good job. I mean, job, job, like career, making some good money. And my boss called me up to Jackson and was like, Carrie, I hate to tell you this, but your job's getting ready in. <laughs> you got three months. 
and you're not going to be employed anymore. And I, I wasn't shocked, um, and I didn't get fired. They just cut the program, and that was fine with me. But I want to say that to say I'm getting ready to open a business at the end of this year, and I didn't know that that was going to happen. But when I lost my job, my husband and I, we got on grind mode and hustle mode, and we said, you know, we're going to do something different. But I just want to let y'all know that it with y'all because I do not want to be that person because some pe people that don't know me they just see social media we put the good stuff out there don't we they don't know the struggle they don't know what you've been through and I mean I did have an amazing job and I've always worked hard but we went through that period where it was like dang what's next y'all know that new Ariana Grande song thank you next like that's gonna be my caption when I open my, my restaurant because I'll be like thank you for all the other jobs next you know but Honestly, I just wanted to say this for anybody that's going through something or is trying to figure out their path. Like, you just, it can be done. Bigger and better can happen. And what's next for me is not my restaurant. That's just like a one little thing. Like, people think, oh my God, Carrie, that's so big. And don't get me wrong, I'm thankful and I'm grateful, but I'm like, that's not even my last thing. I've never thought like that. Like, I always want bigger and better. But honestly, my next thing I think is going to be my book. Um, I think I'm going to partner with my business partner and we're going to write a book. Two black women out here doing the darn thing and where we came from, humble beginnings, and how we achieved it. And I want to share it with other women so they can know that they can do it too. Uh, for me, that was beautiful. Thank you. Uh, for me, it's actually going to be growing my YouTube and probably trying to get up there in numbers and dropping more um, honest reviews and actually working with more smaller black businesses so I can put the word out there to my followers about more smaller black businesses because a lot of um, natural hair YouTubers don't like to work with smaller businesses because they always looking for the bang in the book. So that is going to be my big thing going forward and also building my blog she'sfoundstrength.com because I share a lot about my life. She's found strength. Dot com. Um, it's more about yes. mm -hmm. it's more about me growing and uh, being a mother and my humble beginnings, me sharing a lot of my motivational tips, my life, and basically. Oh, the sun's not quite out yet, but man, oh man, what another blessed, beautiful day after attending the. Ghost Coast Naturals, Fierce Fly, Fabulous, Hair, Health, and Beauty Extravaganza. Y'all, it was such an amazing time. And I did vlog a majority of it, so I will be trying to get that up to you guys. If not tomorrow, then definitely Tuesday. But let me tell y'all, your girl was tired, okay? <laughs>